Hey everyone, welcome to Sweet Talk with Sweet Pea. I'm Annette and this is Alison. Hi. Today we're going to have a banter about bunting, all of our bunting designs. That's a mouthful. <laughs> yes, it is. Cassie and Sylvana will be along later with a guest um, model, yeah. modelling the new bag that was released this week. And we're going to have James coming along and with the winners of last week's competition and the details of this week's competition. Stay tuned. It's going to be great. Hey folks, thanks for tuning in to episode 14 of Sweet Talk with Sweet P. This week's theme is banter about bunting, where we show you our beautiful range of buntings. I'm standing in front of a few, but Alison and Annette will be here just in a moment to go in a bit more detail about our beautiful buntings. Show you close-ups and different techniques that are used to make them as well. So that's really interesting stuff, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you go check out our website at sweetpea.com, that is S-W-P-E-A.com and have a look at our range yourself. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. So let's talk about last week's comment competition. I set the challenge for you to like the video and comment in the comment section below a place where you would like Sweet Pea to come and visit and why. And this has been my favorite competition by far, hands down. I absolutely enjoyed reading all the comments and I wish I could visit every place that you guys commented. I'm going to announce the winner. The winner is Sandy Bowl. Sandy Bowl, her comment read, please visit Maui, Hawaii in the winter time to see the humpback whales perform their amazing breaches. Be sure to go to the ocean for a whale watch ride to catch sight of the baby whales which are born here in our warm ocean waters. Being on Maui will engage your senses and will inspire ideas for new design. I can't speak for everyone else at Sweet Pea, but I definitely could tell you I would love to come and visit Maui, Hawaii and check out the humpback whales in winter. And definitely, I'm sure we would get heaps of heaps of uh, heaps and heaps of ideas for new designs. We've already got a few uh, Hawaiian themed designs. They are on our website, so go check them out as well. I really love that comment you've put a lot of effort into it and i can really tell that you love your hometown of maui so sandy bowl you are the winner of one pink thang a hot iron ruler and sweepy jaws congratulations and i really hope you enjoy our enjoy your prizes we'll get in touch with you over email and we'll get that shipped out to you as soon as possible so I wasn't planning on doing that this week, but I truly fell in love with all your comments and I saw how much effort you put into them and how much you loved your hometowns. So I've added a bonus prize this week, a $20 gift voucher to use on our online store for our digital designs only. And the winner of that $20 gift voucher is Nicola Walker. Her comment read as, I would love you to visit the UK and come and see the dramatic coastline of Cornwall, the little fishing villages and towns, the tiny streets and cottages, Cornish ice cream. Then into Devon where the soil is deep red, has to be seen. The scenery changes as you cross the moor, as you cross the moors, but stop for a while and have one of our famous cream teas while you admire the view. I love that comment, Nicola. I would love to come and visit Cornwall in the UK. It sounds beautiful and I would and I'm a sucker for ice cream. So you've won a $20 gift voucher there. And also, uh, just an honorable mention to Tammy Spracklin. This is her comment read as, come visit Star Valley, Wyoming, known as the Little Switzerland in the Rockies. 75 miles away are the Grand Teddens and Yellowstone National Park, with the absolute most spectacular views your eyes will ever see. Make sure to come during the three short months of summer we get. So many places to see in Wyoming. Tammy, it's honestly a dream for me to come and check out uh, Yellowstone National Park. So hopefully when we head back over to America, we can come and visit your town in Wyoming. Because I enjoyed reading your comments so much last week, we're going to do the same competition next week. To enter, let me know in the comments what sweepy design you had the most fun making and why. If I choose your comment, you'll win one of the one yard packs of the Sweet Shop Fabric range. So that's any color of your choosing, which is an awesome prize. So make sure you comment below what sweepy design you had the most fun making and why. On this episode, we are running James's Wheel of Names again. To enter, watch this video from start to finish and find the four mystery bunting designs. 
Once you have found all four designs, email sweetpeacompetitions at gmail.com with your answers and your name. If anyone new to Sweet Talk and wondering what I'm talking about, each week we run a competition where we give three viewers a chance to win a $20 gift voucher. So all you have to do is find the four mystery bunting designs and I'll add you onto James's wheel of names, which I'll draw out next week. And you'll be in a running to win a $20 gift voucher. It's as simple as that. Anyway, I'll be back later to spin James's wheel of names from the Faraway Places episode. So stay tuned for that. Hi guys, my name's Cassie and we have Silvana and her puppy Maya. We're going to talk about the small dog carrier today. Silvana was the digitizer, so she's going to tell us a little bit more about it. Yes, yeah, so I um, designed this bag with um, Maya as my inspiration because when she was a puppy, um, it was it's good to have a bag to carry them around in. And she still fits in it now and she's um, five to six months old now. Um, so I've done it so that their head um, sticks out of this bit, so they're not um, completely uh, enclosed. Enclosed in the bag, yeah. And then, so and I left this panel, um, the top bit blank, so you can um, put your own dog's name on the panel with your embroidery machine's text settings. So here we've got Penny, and on the other side we have written Mayor on our bag. And we've also used our um, sweet pea zippers here as well. This is a good pocket for um, putting treats in, um, a ball, or anything else you want to take with you for your dog when you're out and about. So for our sample, we used plastic cam snaps, but if you've got a wriggly little puppy, you could use metal durable snaps. You could also add a zipper. We've got a blog on how to do that and we'll put all the information in the description. So to work out the length of your bag for your particular puppy, measure the length of your dog and then the height from their hollow of their neck down to their, the bottom of their sternum and that should be the length between this section here. So I'll just show you how to do that. We'll bring our little wriggle worm over. Are you going to sit down? Sitting. May I sit? Here you go. All right. So from her bum to the neck for neck, we've got about 16 inches. So the length of her body will fit perfectly in our sample. And then we've got the length from the whole of her neck down to the bottom of her sternum. And that should be about four inches as well. So this bag is perfect for that. If you wanted to adjust the Ma amount of blocks that you add to this bag if you have a much longer dog or you wanted to give them more room you can do that as well or even the length of our bottom border to make it wider to assist in making your puppy more comfortable you can also add like a little blanket down the bottom and that can also give them a little bit of height in the bag so I'll just put this in here In our sample, we've put a leash tether. Ours is quite long, you can shorten that, depending on your dog as well. Give Maya a go in here. Let's see how she goes. <laughs> Are you gonna sit still? So this just attaches to her collar. Good girl. And then, oh, maybe the blanket's too much for her, but. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so you can clasp her up and that's it. And our Hi. sample size is um, the 6x10. So if you do have a slightly larger dog, you can do the 7x12. Hi everyone. As Annette said, we're here today to talk to you about our bunting. Uh, she's calling it a banter with bunting, but I just know I'm going to stuff that up if I try to say that too often. Tongue twister. <laughs> There's a tongue twister. I actually thought of trying to make a great big rhyme about it, but no, no, no. We'll just stick with banter with bunting. Yes. yes. I think people do, does everyone call them bunting all over the world, do you think? 
Or no. just some people call them banners, fl- maybe? Banners or flags? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Yes. Well, so we might as well start with this one because yes. that's obviously your favourite scene as you were wearing Where? earlier. Yes, it looks lovely. It's actually part of a set and uh, we call it the owl and flowers bunting this one, but there's a matching quilt and everything too. Mm. So I think uh, on the website, in the under the product, in the photos, we have a few different coloured yeah. versions and everything that some customers yeah, have made. So the little owls have all got their little personalities. So this particular bunting is made with the method, it's a bit like making a mug rug, and you make it, you do all your embroidery here and paste the backing on the top, and once it comes out of the hoop, you can turn it inside out. Yeah. So there is a raw edge along the mall along That's here. That's right. And we've made our own binding, but you could also buy bias binding yeah. or use yeah. ribbon or whatever you like. So it's a very so. easy method of making bunting, yep. just turning it the right side out. Yep. So yeah, that's, that's our, that one. our one. Well, we show the other type. Yes. Uh, where is the other type? So, oh, well, up here behind us, Yes. Uh, some of our baby bunting. So this is made with yeah. soluble stabilizers. So we've got a pile of our letters here. So what we've done is we've kept the identical shape on quite a few of our designs so they've actually become mix and match that's right so this one is an alphabet one later on we've added the and symbol because people ask for that so that's an add-on for that that's right uh, we've done a whole lot of critters as well so a ladybug monkey that's just what that's all, there was an extra l that was in the alphabet i don't know why that was there there's only one l in the alphabet in it that's right uh we've added a little bell one here so you could change it to a christmas yeah you could say merry christmas or something so this like is that. the pile of the alphabet here that i've got so i've got mine starting with c because as you can see up on the wall i've used the a and the b and the y for baby so mm-hmm. i wanted to make baby so i just made the b twice and then we've got the l add-ons too so that was a baby one but you could make by repeating letters yeah Happy birthday, bunting, anything you like. And this this one's actually done differently to how we sew in this one here. As I said, this mm. is like a mug rug yep. and you turn it out the right side. This one actually has a satin stitch on the front and the back. So what you do is you use soluble stabiliser in your hoop and make sure you actually use the colour in your That's bobbin right. that you want. That you is. might not want it to match the front, but if you want it to look nice, yeah. it's better. Because, I've made that mistake. Because you can see it sometimes around yeah. The, yeah. the edge. I've forgotten to change my thread and then the bottom's been the white bobbin thread, so then I've gone back and Yeah, and a, a tip for newcomers too is, is if you do get an edge that you don't like, you can use a permanent marker or something. Mm. These days you can get permanent markers in a whole range of colours, so right. you can sort of colour it into yeah to fix it up that's been done here many a time yeah <laughs> so with this block the part of the design is a buttonhole is sewn into it and that's what you can use to thread your ribbon or string through to hang it up whereas the owl has got the the owl and flower bunting has got the binding across the top so a tip that i've got is i use my pink fang which is made by the same people who make the purple fang but they've made it pink for our sweet pea primary use is that you use this tip to, to aid pushing fabrics underneath your needle when you're sewing instead of your finger so <laughs> instead of the needle going through your finger yeah it'll hit that and this is just like a flexible plastic and actually that's a point about it as well that it is a flexible plastic yes it is very flexible because that's one there's some imitators now out in the market but yeah. they're made with a, a different plastic and they're quite brittle yeah. and you can snap them yeah whereas so this i really like won't. and Earlier on in the year, I was making cot sheets, fitted cot sheets for my new baby granddaughter, Remy. And as you know, when you're threading elastic through a hemming thing, when you wanted to put elastic through, I usually use a safety pin and tie it to the elastic and pull it through. I had a brainstorm of an idea and I thought, why don't I use my pink thing? And you can thread your ribbon through or your elastic. What I did actually, Alison, because it was a big piece, I, was, yeah. I just used my machine and just did a couple of stitches and then, it, then I could take it out. Yeah. But for the purpose of this exercise, this is just to use the thread. It can go up through the hole or down through the hole, however you want to do it, pulls it through. So that's an easy way. And the thing with this is, instead of a little safety pin, you get more pulled through yeah. when you're pulling through the elastic or the ribbon. So that's just another tip for the pink thing. We have found so many uses for that. Yeah. So you can actually you think, yeah. haven't we? You can actually have it just... If you um, use it a lot or tend to lose it, you can actually just tie it a bit of ribbon and I don't have my glasses on. So yeah, you can make sort of a little lanyard type yeah, thing around it. Yeah, you can do that. So why can't I get my 
because it's all frayed now at the end and I can't see it because I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> there we are, but it's a very big hole. Yeah, you could just make a lanyard for yourself. Yeah. Hang it around, tie it to your handle of your machine or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll see. and also another idea I thought yes. was, not that one. No. But because I'm in grandma mode now, Alison, yeah. I thought, wouldn't these be good alphabet teaching tools oh, yes. for a child? Yep. You could have them and, you know, they reuse in them fact, all. In fact, you could make a little book by just putting it through Actually, you that could. side and you could flip oh, them. Can't do it. And you could flip them over. Yeah. So they're like little side cards. And another little trick that you could do actually is if this is C for cat, you could do the background material with like a cat print or something. Or something. Yeah, so you could do that. Yep. And D for dog. Or you could put dogs. a cat on the reverse. You could, yes. Fabric. Lots of uses. So it's not, you know, you're only limited by your imagination, really. Yeah. So there we are. So Remy's going to know her alphabet at a very early age because Grandma's going to be over there teaching her with the blocks. All right, so we'll quickly <laughs> run through a few others so, yes. that we have. What about this one here behind us? We did this while we had a lot of requests for a New Year's Eve yeah. Thing. So we've, we've done this. So we've made this design in 2019, hence why it's 2019. But it's so clever because for a while you're going to be able to use these three numbers. That's right. So if it was so 2020, 2021, just yeah. make more, and 2022. Yep. And I'm presuming after that we might have to make a three. Yeah, we'll put out <laughs> more numbers and things. So. so these come in different sizes. No, they don't. They're just made in the 5x7 hoop. This Alison. is the 5x7. Only seven. the 5x7. Yep. But it comes with this little flags on the end as well. And so, so they can, Christmas they can follow from our Christmas one. I'm going to try and get right across here to get that into the camera. So I've got it up the wrong way. I should have had this row of bunting first because this one says Mary, Mary. <laughs> and then Christmas. But they've all got the little Yeah, everyone's got every every little thing. Every block has with. so much detail in yeah. it. So, and that's, that's a little sign, street sign that says... An north arrow pole. that says to the North Pole. Yeah. So a lot of thought has gone into this. Even the R. Yeah, the R's a It's Arthur Rudolph. Reindeer. Yeah, or reindeer. He's got his little antlers, so that's all just embroidered on. Yeah, and there's two different R's actually if you don't want the reindeer. Yeah. Anyway, so that's a Christmas one. We also, this is another Christmas one. This is one of the first buntings we did, I think, Alison. I think People so. like um, Advent calendar bunting with pockets. Yes. So these ones have been made in a five by seven hoop with little pockets and you can put little gifts in them like little wrapped chocolates or gifts or whatever yep so it's been made in a few different sections because it's so long so we've got one to six there seven to eight well it can also be hung then like an advent calendar on that's right that's right each other yeah, so yeah. we've done it that way so we could do that basically it's all pretty much the same but mm. There's a few different shapes the yeah. numbers are in, and each one goes all the way to 24. So that's so those. That's that one. It's always fun storing bunting, Alison. Well, they do look. It folds nicely. Yeah. I'll just put that over here for a minute. Okay, then we've got some nice Australiana bunting. Yes. We'll get rid of our owls for a little minute. Okay. Grab this over here. And we'll so images of Australia. Up. So we've got the platypus. The frill neck lizard, the kangaroo, and the black swan. The black swan's actually the mass animal mascot of Western Australia, I think. Yeah, I think you'll find that probably all of the different states. That's listed on the website. So that's that one. And again, I think that one, this is just five made in seven. the five by seven hoop. Yep. And this one is too. Yeah. The woodland. Woodland animals. So with these, you could just repeat these and make as many of the animal blocks you like. You don't need to use the plain ones. We've just put plain ones in there. Haven't yeah, we? yeah. Well, it looks nice to make up the yeah to break up the animals. Yep. So it's a little fox. And then of course Halloween. Um. <laughs> so this was one last year. Basically, they're all scary faces. Yeah. And this is this green is actually the stitching, the embroidery. That's, right, that's, a, that's a design one. quilted one, and that one is too. This one's a skeleton. <laughs> so on our website, if you go to the search bar, um, we've got bunting and flags in um, collections, so you can see what other buntings that we have that you might need for your special occasion. 
Um, so now we'll probably just talk about the couple of new things we've had released this week. If I can find them under my bunting. <laughs> so we've just had our dragon released. Yes. So here's the one you'll see on the website. Here's a little zipper purse made with our metallic look zippers. And PU actually. Yeah, and PU. Form. So this is the rose gold. gold. You can actually see the beautiful detail in the stitching there. It gives like it really makes it look like a. So he's, he's made it. in the four by four. So of course the smaller the hoop, the smaller the purse. So if you want a smaller purse, use the four by four. And it's all lined, and no raw seams. Yeah. And then Emma loved it so much she's made herself one. And she's made him fluffy. She's used two little pink fabrics in that one. She has. So you can really personalise them and make them your own, really. Yep. So that's a dragon with them go. And this is a little purse for sanitizer that we've just released. So it's just to be clipped onto a bag. It's just got a cam snap. It's all lined and you just put your sanitizer bottle there and it comes out. We don't have the best sanitizer bottle in the bottom there, but no. it's got satin stitch around there and you have the nozzle coming out. It's so easy because I find if I have my sanitizer bottle in my handbag, yeah. forever searching. But if you've got it linked, you're always going to have it at hand, aren't you? Yeah. So that's that's that. And of course, we had our um, dog carrier bag released, but you'll see that shortly. And I thought we might just do it to a, just a little sneak peek. <laughs> well, it's actually a big sneak peek because it's our June yeah. sell along. This. Which starts in a couple of weeks' time, but it's such Very a beautiful design. We'll just give you a bit of a sneak peek. Now, I've got to be careful because it is only a sneak peek. I think that look it's this way. Okay. That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've had a bit of a bit of a banter about bunting today. I hope you've um seen some designs you didn't know we had before. Check them out on our website and, and keep watching. We've got yeah, lots more to come today. Yep. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm down in the Sweet Pea Warehouse getting ready for our show. We're going to the Sydney Craft and Quilt Fair, June 30 to July 4th. We'd love for you to come down and see the team. Um, would you have a like to have a look at our mock-up stands? We're going to be bringing out cork to sell, our scissors, stitch busters, all our little gadgety things, packs of zippers. So we've got six packs, three packs, long packs, short packs. So they're great for sewing with. We're going to have our thread packs, all of our Sweet Pea products, our essential range is going to be down at the show. And we'll also be bringing a lot of our machine embroidery design samples with us. So we'll have quilts, table runners, some of our bags, some of our purses. Uh, can't wait to show them to you. So we'd love for you to all come down and say hi to Alison and I and James and Deanna. See you soon. Hey everyone, welcome back to James's Wheel of Names, where we give three viewers a chance to win a $20 gift voucher to use on the Sweet Pea store. So today I'm going to announce the winners from the Far Away Places episode. I set the challenge last episode that you had to find the four mystery designs from Far Away Places. The first was Japanese hexagon quilt, the second was Hawaiian reflections bag, the third was the African animals table runner and the Canada Maple Leaf Center, which are all some of my favorite Sweet Pea designs. If you haven't seen them, go check out them on our website at sweetpea.com. That is S-W-P-E-A.com. So we had another lots of entries again this week, so I know that you guys are enjoying this, um, and everyone got them all, all answers right, which is awesome, so I was able to enter you all onto James's Wheel of Names. So I'll just get into it now. So if you're wondering, I'm just using a, a website on Google called Wheel, The Wheel of Names. And I've jokingly called it James's Wheel of Names. But all it is is just a Google website that you input your, the names that you want and it randomly generates. So I don't know who's going to win. Also, if you've already won, you're still allowed to play each week. Uh, there's only 45 people in this spin, so really good odds of winning the prize multiple times. Anyway, on that note, I've got the James's Wheel of Names up and I'll get on the first spin going. Who's it going to be this week? So the first winner we have, Patricia, Patricia Washington. 
Congratulations, Patricia. You'll be winning a $20 gift card. So I'll email the details to you about that. Like to say, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in and watching Sweet Talk with Sweet Pea. It makes it so much fun for me. Anyway, moving on to the second name. Second click, sorry. Who's it gonna be? And we have Diane Lyons. Congratulations, Diane. I actually think Diane won the first comment competition, or maybe the second one. So you're having a lucky run there, Diane. Congratulations, enjoy your $20 gift voucher now as well. And now we're moving on to our last and final click. Who have we got? And the winner is Pat Cohen. Congratulations, Pat. Enjoy your $20 gift voucher as well. So that's James's Wheel of Names done again for this week. We're also running the same thing and I'll be back again drawing next week's prize. So you have to find the four mystery bunting designs hidden throughout this video. So hopefully you've stayed to the end and you've found all your answers. So that's it for me this week. Remember to like and subscribe on the video and go check out our website at sweepee.com. That is S-W-P-E-A.com for awesome machine embroidery designs and sewing essentials. Thank you, have a good one.